The Still Dawn update is now live after a long night of incidents. Season 2 ended before its due time and Fallout First is also having issues. A lot has happened in these past two days. It's news time. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. I have so much to report in this one. After all, Bethesda did it again. They couldn't stick to the DLC release date once again. This time they released it earlier, but don't get mistaken, it was not a planned surprise, it was actually the quickest and most pleasant fix to a huge mistake they did yesterday. Anyway, I will also talk about another oopsie from Bethesda's part, they ended season 2 beforehand and the Fallout first is also not running very well. I will also give you an update on the ongoing server issues and other interesting facts from the data mining community. There are no spoilers in this video, as obvious since the new DLC is now live and running, so brace yourselves for another batch of awesome news. Let's do this! Alright, I am sure some if not most of you were really confused when you first woke up this morning. I surely was. Last night Bethesda released a new update for Xbox, by mistake by the way, and as a result Xbox players couldn't log in anymore. Their client was now out of date with the game. And yeah, the game version just didn't match the client, and so on. At first, nobody knew why this happened, not even Bethesda. Just like Magic, a new DLC got released and nobody knew why. I really thought they would just revert the update on Xbox, I mean, it would be the easiest approach. But for some reason, Bethesda decided to just push the Still Dawn DLC into the other platforms and release the new DLC before the official release date, which was supposed to be on the 1st of December. They haven't even updated their website yet, well, until the time I am recording this, it still says December 1, it's a magic world. Now, to fix this hot mess, they basically decided to just release the DLC, so no, it was not a planned surprise for Thanksgiving, as some people have been pointing out. It was just a decision to try and avoid upsetting even more players. Plus, by releasing the DLC, Bethesda is ensuring lots of veterans return for the new content sooner than expected. Moreover, the Still Dawn DLC has been done for a while anyway. It has been stable on the PTS for weeks, so they had hardly anything to lose by pushing the DLC forward. Maybe this incident was made on purpose to be used as an anchor to push the DLC beforehand? Hmm, I don't know, there are many rumors and speculation going on. Anyway, moving back to the facts, the release is now official, Bethesda has announced it through different channels, and for PC you should expect an update with around 10 GB, for console it's a bit more, around 14. This is the new live version you need to have in order to play the game. Now, we still don't know how did an update magically got released in one single platform, but hey, with Bethesda things keep happening by mistake, nobody seems to know how things end up happening, but one thing is for sure, they do happen and someone did it. Moving forward, I also try to know what happened to the previously announced Still Dawn bundle, but I couldn't find anything new, besides my old videos and their previous articles, so I guess they are still working on it. It should get released in the following days, or maybe on December 1st, which was supposedly the launch date for everything, including the bundle. But anything is possible at this point, so let's wait and see. Next, we have another issue that started yesterday. Suddenly, dozens of players started reporting that Season 2 had just ended. Their challenges no longer were adding score to the scoreboard progression. Bethesda was quick at following up with the problem, though. It seems like the season was scheduled to end on the 24th of November for whatever reason and someone forgot to change. Anyway, a few weeks ago Bethesda confirmed Season 2 would end on the same day as Season 3 starts, on December 15, so this was a huge oopsie from their end, as you can clearly see. They most likely forgot to update the new deadline for Season 2 and that's all there is into this issue, really. 
Today, you can find lots of extra weekly challenges to help you finish season 2 as a form of compensation. Actually, it's difficult not to end it. They just gave you 13k score in weeklies and there's a double score event coming soon on top of that. So make sure to take advantage of all of that if you are not done with season 2 yet. I am done with it for a long time, so I don't have much to do with it anymore. But if you are not done yet, then this could be your last push to unlock everything before season 3 arrives. Fallout First has seen better times. In the past days, I've seen a rising of reports about the Fallout First membership and how it's not really working for Steam players. Basically, you purchase the membership there, but the benefits take days or weeks to activate. In some reports, players claim to be in a constant battle with Bethesda support to receive what's rightfully theirs. And that's not the end of it. There are also reports where players say they never receive their monthly free atoms, one of the membership benefits. Well, that's why I never transitioned to Steam. We know how messy Bethesda usually is, so I didn't want to risk additional problems just to use one less client. I never had a single issue with my membership. Maybe it's luck, maybe it's because I didn't move to Steam. Who knows? Anyway, if you are having issues with Fallout First on Steam, please make sure to contact their support until they give you what's yours. If that doesn't happen, then get a refund. I mean, Steam is excellent to get your money back, so don't just sit back and wait for Santa to come or a miracle to happen, because that's unlikely. Otherwise, time will just pass and then you will most likely lose your chance to resolve the situation. Now, I want to give you an update on the server issues. Note that I haven't played ever since the DLC went live today, or yesterday, depending on your time zone. I've been all day working on this video, so I cannot confirm or deny the servers are now performing better. But yesterday, they weren't, and besides the server not responding messages, I ended up in a server where the delay or the sync was over 30 seconds. I had never seen anything alike. I can't remember such a long server delay even from other video games. That's the main reason that made me add this point here once again. Just look at that, it's actually impressive, in a very bad way. I hit these Yagwais dozens of times and the damage only registered half a minute later. I ended up dying since my hits were not registering, even my emotes took so long to register they showed up when I was dead. Such a dreadful experience. Now, the curious part here is that my friend Dave was on the same server and he said everything was fine for him. I changed servers and the delay was simply gone. We are both living in the center of Europe, so our pings should be very similar. As such, I don't understand why we both had such different experiences on the same exact server. Everything is just so strange and random with Fallout 76. I really hope things have improved with the Steel Dawn update. Otherwise, I don't see a lot of veterans sticking around with such server issues. It's time to move on to some great news. There is something you should know regarding the new DLC. It doesn't interfere with past content, thankfully. Recently, a community manager confirmed the Steel Dawn DLC will not lock any past quests. So if you haven't finished them yet, it's alright to start your Steel Dawn journey. Actually, the only difference or addition to the new questline is specific dialogue options related to past decisions in previous quests, of course. So once again, no worries, feel free to quest at your own will and pace, everything will be just alright. Recently, I have found some interesting things posted by the data miners. One of them is related to the Plasma Flamer. Have you ever wondered if the mod itself or the damage is bugged? I surely have wondered that several times, as more and more players use this weapon and the Flamer mod. 
Anyway, according to the data miner Mapex, the plasma flamer is working just fine. Everything is as intended. By turning the plasma rifle into a flamer, you are turning the weapon into a heavy gun. Therefore, why it has a reduced range, higher damage, and an area of effect. If you think about it, this weapon is only viable at close range, so it makes sense it excels at what it's supposed to do, basically. What about the cripple effect? Some of you guys have asked me in the past if you can deal extra damage to crippled enemies, and to be honest with you, I had no single idea. This is not the type of information you can simply check in game. Thankfully, the data miner community is very friendly, and according to Xera, the cripple effect just disables the limp itself. It doesn't allow you to do any extra damage. So basically, if you cripple an enemy, the effect will depend on the crippled limp. If it's a leg, the enemy will get stunned in place or walk very slowly. If it's the head, they will most likely miss all their shots on you. It really depends on the enemy type you crippled, but the rule is vertical. I know it can be deceiving. Logically, if an enemy is crippled, it becomes vulnerable and as such, you should inflict more damage. But in Fallout 76, crippling enemies does not increase your damage at all. That's the rule. The next news is about the Brotherhood of Steel NPCs, to be specific, the known named ones, the Helpful and Initiate. With the Steel Dawn DLC, you will find some Brotherhood of Steel outposts across Appalachia, but these operatives can get really, really buggy. For example, in here, I was taking cinematics and a Scorch Beast attacked us. By default, the Brotherhood members should defend themselves, right? But look at their reactions. They kept scouting and walking like nothing is even happening. In fact, the beast landed on us later and one of them kept going through the mini nook box like he was looking for the remote to explode the bombs. <laughs> I don't know. Go on, just throw them at your enemies or something. You are being attacked. You should defend yourself. I must admit, I was laughing so much I ended up dying later. These guys just didn't care, didn't give a crap. Scorch Plague, Mutated Bats, where? What's that? We don't care. Um, yeah, <laughs> we see nothing of the such. After a while, a Holy Discord spawned and the Brotherhood fools started attacking me, out of the blue. Why me? I don't know. The turret got me killed, but guess what? The Holy Discord revenged me. He swept the place clean. I went back to check what happened and they were all dead. At least I learned these NPCs can take damage and even die like the other factions. It's just they are a bit derp and will either ignore enemies or forget about ranks and randomly think you are hostile. In other words, these NPCs got some heavy bugs attached to them. Just a heads up, but I'm sure Bethesda will fix it in its due time. Now, let me share a small trick I learned yesterday by reading this Reddit post. Someone shared how to get gnomes wearing masks at your camp. Yep, that's right. First of all, if you don't know where to find one, head to the general steak house, to the garden. There's plenty of them there. Then you need a specific display case or the trick will not work. Also, you need to place the gnomes on the second shelf part, not at the bottom, then add the masks you want at the very top. I highly suggest you to use the tallest and widest masks you own, this way you won't be able to see any of the gnomes hats. This trick basically creates a visual illusion, a very convincing one. That's it, voila, you can now have unique gnomes at your camp wearing masks. It's a very straightforward trick. Do enjoy! Lastly, let me remind you about Bethesda's camp screenshot event for November. The entry deadline is soon, so make sure to deliver your favorite cozy screenshot before the end of the mount. There are no real rewards other than the opportunity to get your work shared in Bethesda's official articles, posts and other media. Plus, it's always fun to compete if you enjoy camp building. So why not? Best of luck to all of you and your cozy creations if you are participating.
The random bug I selected for this video is a quiet alternative one. We were about to do a queen and suddenly this forward station was filled with raiders. There was at least a dozen of them shooting at the nearby Scorched. I had never seen so many raiders in a random encounter before. I am assuming they came from one, otherwise I wouldn't know. They even tried to help us kill the queen, it was hilarious, one of a kind event I must confess. That's one of the reasons I love this game so much, you often find these weird unique events. Anyway, that's going to be everything for this video, I have a lot more to share but I also need to play and work on new guides. I was really not prepared for an early release, I actually had a plan until next Tuesday with more previews, even got footage ready to be edited. It's a shame, but oh well, it is what it is. I am Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to help YouTube know you enjoyed what you saw and you want more. Also thanks to all my members and patrons for their continued support, you guys rock. That's it for my part, I will see you all very very soon in the next video or in the wasteland. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!